You guys, we are in Oklahoma still. Well, just one night in Oklahoma. Um, this is the Marlin Mansion in Ponca City. Be right back. Okay, so the Marlin Mansion was built by E.W. Marlin. He was an oil tycoon um, from Pennsylvania. He had lost his money back there, came out here, and I think it was around 1911. Um, came out here and struck oil and built up, um, he has a house in town, um, an estate in town, and then he had traveled to Europe so much that he loved the, the mansions and villas there and came back and built this place right here. They call it the, um, they call it the mansion on the prairie. Him and his second wife lived in here. His first wife died before it was completed, so he was remarried and lived in here. His second wife was his niece who him and his first wife adopted and then when she passed away he had the adoption annulled and then married her interesting a little bit of a nice juicy gossip there for the neighbor town so they went on a long honeymoon and then came back here and he moved her into this place anyway what this, company did he he had the conoco he started the conoco oil company which was then um merged with Phillips Petroleum. Okay, here's definitely a grand entrance. And here's the doors we just came in. Yeah, look at this. Now we're just going to show you the some of the highlights, just so that otherwise this is a huge mansion. I guess I want to say that there's just so much history here with this house and in Ponca that it would get tedious and probably boring for you guys to, to hear it. I mean, the house is beautiful, so I mean, you can easily go onto YouTube or Google it to, hear, to get all the details on this place because it is pretty magnificent when you start hearing about it and reading it. All the original, this is original stuff. Original Marlin, China. China. And I guess this is him right here. EW. Station two, breakfast room. Um, this was his We're supposed favorite to... room. Okay. This. 1926 to 1928 they built this. So this is only this small kitchen that was just for them, but when they had big parties, there's a bigger kitchen downstairs. And everything was transferred by dumbwaiter up here. Too. Here's the dumbwaiter. So that's everything that come from downstairs. And, uh, yeah, that goes, goes up and down from top floor to basement on the phone. is responsible for all the ornately painted ceilings throughout the mansion. Wow. Um, each one of each one of each one of these ceilings are most of them are different. This was look at these. The ceiling in Shinwasri or Chinese Chippendale. This is the ballroom. S Station six is the ballroom. Um okay this is the one that has the ceiling. Check out the ceiling. A ceiling pattern featuring gold leaf. I believe this was 14 karat gold leaf. Waterford crystal chandeliers. 
let's see, to replace the ceiling and chandeliers today, the cost would be about $2 million. This is, this is how big this fireplace is. Yeah. Take a look at the patio out here. A rainy day here in Ponca City. Okay, this is station seven. Ah, okay. South salon or living room. Um, this admitted guests to the mansion for parties. Oh, the arched entry right there. Admitted guests to the mansion for parties. Um, he was, Marlon was fond of standing on the south entrance and looking across the vista. When the estate was still intact, Monument Road was lined with statuary, leading from the Pioneer Woman statue to the main gates. That's the entrance where we came in right there. And I'm sorry, it looks like we're getting some glare here in, with the windows. The lens is cleaned off. Uh, I think it's just weird light coming in. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, the lady said that this cost 5.5 million to build back in the mid 20s. They only lived, it took three years to build, and then they only lived here for three years. Italian stucco barrel ceiling is similar to the one in the dining room. Original painting, Bernard de Hoop. That's an original there. Dutch artist. You guys can see they didn't have much light back in the day. What is this? Okay, Station, Station 10. 10. George Marlin's quarters. The adopted son. The adopted son. Who's actually his nephew. Okay, so that's a sitting room. It's like the first plain, ce plain ceiling. Station 11. George Marlon's bedroom. This is his bedroom. Okay, so these are these are guest bedrooms over here. This one's George Marlon's bedroom now, right there. Right here's George's bedroom. And I'll bet you that door goes into the sitting room. Oh, could be. Looks like his his actual furnish, furnishings too. Got the black black ribbons on them. So this is 12. Um, this furniture was purchased for a teenage Lydia while living in the first Marlin home on Grand Avenue. So it was guest bedroom. Guest bedroom number one. Dumb waiter with their intercom system. Guest bedroom number two, Will Rogers suite. So apparently Will, Will Rogers stayed here. He used to come visit. Okay, Will Rogers slept here. Original beds, original sofa. Um, it's a llama wool rug. It's a yellow bathroom. A llama wool rug, wow. If you guys are anywhere near, near Ponca City, uh, come check this out. There, this is pretty cool. A lot of history here, the oil, oil industry, and he's got other properties in in town too that are almost as magnificent. That's that dumb waiter that goes down to the kitchen, Station 15. Station 17. Station 18, Terrace 19. Suite number three. Station 19, there's the, here's the, here's the master ba bedroom. Master suite. Oh, suite. Yeah, suite. 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 All it takes is money, people. All it takes is money. Kind of slacking on the ceilings upstairs though.
if you guys didn't catch that, uh, this is this is a private entrance from that last suite, terrace suite bedroom that we saw. So I guess he put somebody in there that uh, could sneak on over. Yes, this is the, the dressing room. Alright, so this bathroom features Ooh. an electric sauna. This, here's the electric sauna, I guess. We're the, believed to be one of the first in the United States. Some of the original bulbs are still in the place. Gosh, don't touch a bulb while you're in there. The shower originally had 11 ceramic nozzles to create a jet effect. Look. Look at all these body sprays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. When it was built, this house had central air and, and uh, central heat, which was extraordinary for the time period. All takes his money, people. Station 20, Lydia's quarters. I wonder if there's a private door. Oh, there's a door going back there. There's a door. Rounded corners. We know rounded corners very unique. Oh, wow, yeah. Air vent, the, the air vents are decorated with tiny carved flowers. The fireplace is carved from imported Italian pink marble. So a private door from her bedroom to his bedroom and a private door from that room to his quarters. Okay, so this is her, Lydia's dressing room and private private bathroom. Dressing area here, I guess. And back into the bedroom, and see, goes off into EW's. Favorite riding outfit. Favorite riding outfit, and, and she lived until 1987. So her inaugural gown, inaugural gown when he became governor. Station 21. Look at these mosaic ceiling. Wow. This is, oh, this is a 24 karat, 24 karat gold leaf to the canvas, then added the Renaissance style paintings. Okay, now we're going down, down in the basement. This is the grand stairway. It is grand. And the Hall of Merriment. Do, do explain the Hall of Merriment, Lisa. So, let me see if it's on here too. We all like merriment. So Marlon did an international competition to create a pioneer woman. And from what I understand is he paid each of the sculptors, $10,000 to sculpt, uh, make a sculpture showing a very strong female with um, a child, a, uh, a, some kind of a, a young child with her. And once they were all created, he then went, took them on tour around the United States and there was what, like 750,000 votes. This is the one that was, that won the competition that was voted majority and he, I think he got a hundred thousand dollars right yep, that one got a hundred thousand uh, I spent money like water on my people and my town they flourished and the town blossomed like a rose okay look at the ceiling look look at the floor here
inch scale tile floors, and actually they're really hammered. Solid copper of the hood hangs above the original gas range. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it had some kind of a table or island right here because he was serving mm -hmm. more of something. At the cabinets. Poker room. A poker room tunnel. Tunnel. Or maybe that's it. Apparently there's a tunnel somewhere. Where's the tunnel go? Well, let's see. To the right of the hunt kitchen is the secret poker room where high stakes games were played during prohibition days. <laughs> this room also houses a walk-in safe, which is right here which disguises a narrow stair to the hidden whiskey room. Oh. The north door opens it to a surprising 550 foot tunnel leading to the boathouse and the artist studio. The boathouse. And so is that it right there? This is not on tour? Okay, here's, so here's, here's, the, here's the whiskey room. The secret tunnel down the stairs. Will Rogers said the south is dry and we'll vote dry. That is, everybody sober enough to stagger to the polls. <laughs> hey, we're getting behind the scenes look here at the main this kitchen. Is, this is mechanical areas here. Automatic fire doors that are original. Oh, okay. And a fire hydrant to your life that's original. Staff stairway goes up four flights ultimately to the attic, and so there's just a back stairway. Yeah, their sleeping quarters were all in the attic, right? Uh, no. Down one? There were two rooms down this hallway, oh, okay. and they were like dormitory rooms. There were probably two young ladies, two beds, a dresser, shared a bath. Everyone else had a cottage. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had their own cottage. Wow. Entrance and exit for these folks, plus grocery so they would have got bulk groceries. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. And then here's the kitchen. Good. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a mean kitchen, huh? This is 1904. 1924. 1924. Yeah. Amazing. What his vision was into the RDL. Uh -huh. Huh. That's the same dumb waiter that. That's the one you've seen on the other floor. On the opposite sides by different floors. Yeah. Yeah, that dumb waiter. And that's an incinerator. Okay. There were gas burners down here, and you just simply you trash in and off you went. You didn't have to worry about EPA or anybody. Yeah. It wasn't an issue back then. Yeah, <laughs> Golf and range, three ovens, a fourth oven was a bread oven, huge griddle. What's this? Dishwasher? No. Yeah, no, it's actually sort of a, a, a rotisserie. It doesn't spin, oh. but if you wanted to sear the meat just a little bit, you could oh. cook it rare and then just have a sear on the edge of it. It's okay. It's a weird looking thing. Kind of a little grill, sort of. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Kind of it's kind of that. Pressure cooker. Huge skillet. How long have you been involved with the... Uh, uh, with this. 20 years. Now. In the corner is a pantry. In front of here is not original, obviously. But <laughs> the pantry is original. Oh, original pantry. Thank you. That's your pantry. All the bins. And things you might have seen in those days that are not 100% accurate. You would have had flour and sugar and cornmeal. Rice, beans, etc., would have gone over here. And potatoes and onions. That oh, yeah. Thing would have gone over there. Bins there. And then that back, back to the yeah, that would be back to those rooms. That so were that would kind of like the, uh, the um, deliveries would just come down this way. And exactly. Yeah, same all way. And then the other open door would have 
have been a staff dining room. In those days, they would have taken their meals there. We have weddings essentially every weekend, so it's a private room today. Is it, is it still a working uh, kitchen? Um, caterers can serve from here, but they can't cook from here. Okay. They have to bring it cooked. They can keep it warm, serve it, plate it, clean it up, whatever. Got so it. they can't. can't. The sinks are good then? They can't. Uh, this one is not, but the others are. So they can have something like that for cleanup? And, right. and then again, the bridal room is here. Yeah. Where are from? Phoenix. Oh. And I went to the Fiesta Bowl this year. I had it. First time I was ever in Phoenix. It was, a, it was fun. It was a great town. Yeah, it wasn't, what was the date of that? It was like. It was, it was December 1st. Uh, no, it was January. January, 1st. yeah. January yeah. 1st. Yeah, Saturday, January 1st. So, what, I'm sorry, what was this used to This be? had been a dining room for the staff. Mm -hmm. We had one big table and 16 chairs or 20 chairs or whatever would have gone in here. But we have weddings. So, right. this, is, this is the wedding room. Yeah, this is great. Stay pretty busy with, with weddings in, or? Does it? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, booked up for a day. We book a year and a half. Wow. And someone was trying to book two years ahead the other day, and I said, damn, that's just too far. I wouldn't want to be married that long. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. I would say that, but, you know, my goodness, two so good. years and a half. Are, you, are they even engaged yet, or they're hoping to be engaged? Well, yeah, I, I really wanted to ask that. So, 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 so can I ask how much? To do a wedding here, um, right now, all we rent are the tables, the chair. I mean, the space, the tables and chairs are what we provide. Food, booze, DJs. That's all someone else. So ours, this floor is twelve fifty plus a two hundred fifty dollar cleanup damage deposit. Upstairs is fifteen hundred plus a two hundred fifty cleanup and damage deposit. So mm -hmm. under two grand. Okay, and, and and this is April or May of twenty two. So yeah, if they're they're watching down the road here. Right. Yeah. Prices are always subject to change, but we haven't changed them in years. So. Yeah. So, so that that tunnel that goes from the poker room to the uh, uh, po yeah, we saw what door it was, but uh, love to. Wow, we're getting a little special special uh, tour here. And what, what's your name again? David. I'm the and, director. And, and you're the director. Right. All right. Cool. So back here, it was Prohibition days nationwide. Oklahoma was a fairly new state, so we had prohibition both in alcohol and apparently in gambling too. That's changed these days. <laughs> in those days, that's what it was. So. Off the beaten path was the poker room. Two things about the room. One, there's no window. It's the only room in the house with no window. And secondly, there's no ventilation. So if you feel how cold it got once we walked through here, it dropped 20 degrees about. That was presumably so the cigar smoke wouldn't go through the entire house. It would stay in here. The floor to ceiling safe. Once had a combination lock on it. Rather than shelves of money that you might expect, Actually, behind here is this narrow spiral concrete stairway that goes above us to the hidden whiskey room. Oh, it goes above. It goes above for nobody would ever suspect. These little narrow 18, 20 inch concrete steps do spirals up into that. Outdoors, you're underneath the North Terrace. And we would be underneath the North Terrace and nobody have any idea that the roof of the terrace is, is actually the whiskey room. Huh. And then, in order to bring it in, this is going to fit underground tunnel. Okay, it's wet, wet, wet right there. there. Yeah, just we won't go all the way out here. It's cold, but it's leak. So this is the original this, underground tunnel. This is it. This is exactly what you see. So past that farthest light bulb, there's another S curve, pretty similar to this one. And then there's a T. At that T, you've gone 300 feet, a football field underground. And then the T breaks off and goes due west, and it goes to the artist studio, which is 250 feet away. So 550 feet, you can go underground um, through the maze of truck tunnels, never see anybody, they'll never see you. Um, great tornado cellar, great cool air to help the air conditioning, 
and a way to bring booze in at night and nobody's looking. So how, how far underground are we? Oh, five or six feet at this point. Just uh, deep enough to be great insulation yeah. and, uh, and stay cool. I hear talking down there. Yeah, you? that's us. Oh, it's Echo. That's, 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 that's. If there's someone at the 550 foot mark, mark, they could hear us now. They couldn't tell what we were saying, but they could hear us and know there was someone in here. Uh, if we were halfway down there, they could tell what we we're saying. And we're just talking normal voices. And, you know, we're not yelling or anything. It was just normal. In fact, you can't whisper in here. It gets louder. And what? This and this. Oh, yeah. I feel like you just got shot in the back, right? Yeah. <laughs> This was their escape route, and watch the pedal here. Their escape route, and also a way to put lots of liquor in at night. So, any any uh, word on like some of the people that might have been sitting here? Uh, like Will Rogers or what? Well, Will Rogers was in the house many times. Whether he was at the poker table, I cannot tell you that for sure. But he stayed in the house. Yeah. Uh, General Patton was here. I bet you he was at the table, yeah. I'm pretty sure, uh, playing polo. Uh, there are a few other stars from 100 years ago that are questionable. Clark Gable was questionable. I believe he was here, but uh, there's no absolute in writing proof of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there people went through here. Very cool. Well, some of them were quite lucky and they were on that, and some of them not so much. <laughs> That'd be like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, any stories, do you know, of time they tried to they get busted, though, by cops or anything? Or yeah. no? Everybody in town knew it was here. Yeah. They were just waiting for the invitation to the next party. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, they, they all knew it. Yeah. It was a good thing. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. Your name was Dave? David. Dave, okay, yeah. Absolutely. Well, appreciate you. I'm Jay and this is Lisa. Jay, nice to meet you. Wow, that was perfect timing. That, the battery literally ran out right at the end there. Two hours in that McFarland mansion. Wow, that was cool. That was cool that David to uh, to uh, meet us. Uh, he, he said he saw the, to our simple adventures on the rig here. And uh, yeah, it was very cool, very cool. Um, what do you think of that place? It was great. It was very unexpected. I didn't know really, really know what to expect, and just it was really great. It was amazing. What money can buy, that's for sure. As I said, all it, all it takes is money. Yeah. All the di different ceilings. The, each one of those ceilings. Well, the one in fourteen karat was it twenty four karat gold? That was really beautiful. That last one in, in the, you know, like, the, the gold mosaic kind of. Yeah, that, yeah, that, like that. the second floor kind of foyer there. But what it, it's kind of a scandalous, uh, uh, I, we didn't mention in there though, that uh, that Lydia, the niece, it was not a blood niece. It was from his wife's, his, his dead wife's side. So, you know, technically it was it was not incest, but uh, anyway, kind of and an There's like in, a 25 year age difference though. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, quite yeah. a bit. Poker room, whiskey room, uh, that, that's, that's funny, that's funny stuff. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, we're... But, you know, and, and reading more on him and about what he did, and he really was really great to his employees. Because I remember he did Conoco. He's the one that was the creator, founder of Conoco Oil. And um, so he was really great to his employees, too. He really he gave them health care and dental care and built houses. And during the, for that, I just think that's pretty amazing for that time period. Very, very generous. Yeah, very so... generous to the community. So yeah, we know this is a little longer video, so we're going to end this here. Uh, we love you guys. Hit that notification bell. Share this with a like-minded person. You never know what you're going to see on our Simple Adventures. So anyway, love you guys. We'll see you in a few days. See you on our next adventure.